Christ. Let us take a moment and prepare for worship. I invite you with your palm to stand as you are able for the call to worship. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us enter the city with God today and sing hosannas to our king. Let us turn our backs on the powers that grasp and control and open our hearts to the Son of God riding on a donkey. Let us join his parade, surrounded by outcasts and prostitutes, the blind and the leper. Let us follow the one who brought freedom and peace and walk in solidarity with the abandoned and oppressed. Let us shout for joy at Christ's coming and join his disciples, welcoming the broken, healing the sick, dining with outcasts. Let us touch and see as God draws near, riding in triumph towards the cross. We open with hymn number 344.
Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from the ninth chapter of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. <clears throat> he will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut, and he shall command peace to the nations, his dominion from be, shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the seventh chapter of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, <clears throat> the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the coat, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and, a, and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, 
If these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> I just want to share with you quickly, uh, as, and especially if there's anyone visiting with us today, today is typically, typically called in the liturgical year the Sunday of the Palms slash Passion Sunday, where it turns and it goes into the Passion. But we here many, many, 10 plus years ago, decided that we wanted to keep this and honor it as Palm Sunday. We know that the Passion comes throughout this week of Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and so we invite you to come back and hear the Passion as we go through the week. But today, we want to be about the palms and the parade and the joyful entry into Jerusalem for Jesus Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. In just a couple of weeks, I'm going to travel with the choir to New York City. I'm very excited about doing that. They, uh, they, they're going to be learning from the composer Peter Choplin. Lauren already introduced them to his music. In fact, they did a virtual choir, and I, I, I need to say this one more time. The choir over the period during COVID have worked so hard to continue to bring good music to us. And uh, Lauren put together many, many uh, virtual choirs. Now, <clears throat> let, lest we think that these are put together easily and simply, we would be incorrect. It takes many, many hours, not only for the musicians, the singers, to make their tapes that are sent in then to be then blended together but it takes a lot of patience and a lot of time. And they were willing to do that over and over and over again. Well, one of the songs that they did, one of the anthems that they did was by this Mr. Choplin. And they, someone saw this uh, hymn that they did virtually and were really excited because our choir, and, and I, 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 you know, I know we shouldn't be boastful, but I'm gonna just say this. We have an excellent choir. We have excellent music here. They heard our choir sing with quality voices, number one, and number two, what a choir is supposed to do. A choir is always supposed to blend their voices together so that they sound like one. Our choirs, all of them, have such a skill at doing that, of blending their music together so that they sound like one. And the music that we offer is to the praise and glory of God. And that's why I'm excited that our choir has been invited to sing at Carnegie Hall. This is quite an honor for them to be invited. All of the other, there's going to be choirs across the United States at, at, at uh, Carnegie Hall. And, uh, and all of them had to audition to be there and be a part of it. Our choir was asked to be a part of it. All right, we were asked to be a part of it. And I want to say this, and I, I, sometimes we get confused about what this trip is all about. This is our choir's mission trip, right? Now, they may not be going out and painting, and they may not be building ramps, and they may not be doing all the kinds of things we do on a mission trip, but quite honestly, this is a mission trip for the choir. Now, I, 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 and, and just know this, I'm going along on the trip, not as a chaperone, although that may change as I see the trip going on. You know, you never know. But I want to go along to honor our choir as they get the opportunity to, to present the word of God. They are about the mission and vision of all saints. Lest we forget that. This is not just a trip that they're going to go and have fun, although there will be that. They're sat on a mission trip with our youth. This is a trip about going and sharing. Let me share with you. They are fulfilling All Saints' mission and vision. The mission of All Saints is this, give glory to God. What better way do we give glory to God than by singing? They are called to share the good news of Christ. They are doing that as well and they are encouraging growth in faith and discipleship. 
they will be giving witness to everybody who's there, not only the ones who are joining uh, also with them in the choir, but they will give witness to all of us who are there to listen and to hear what's going on. So it's quite an honor to do this. And I wanna share with you some quotes from Martin Luther, just to make sure that we understand how important music is in praising God. Martin Luther says this, next to the word of God, music deserves the highest praise. No greater commendation than this can be found, at least not by us. After all, the gift of language combined with the gift of song was only given to humankind to let them know that they should praise God with both word and music, namely by proclaiming the word of God through music. Again, Martin Luther said this, as long as we live, there is never enough singing. And another one, next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. Now, as I was researching, I found this next one. I just have to share it with you. This may have become my favorite Martin Luther quote. A person who does not regard music as a marvelous creation of God must be a clodhopper indeed, and does not deserve to be a called a human being. He, it gets better. He should, be, uh, he should be permitted to hear nothing but the braying of asses and the grunting of hawks. I guess we could say that Martin Luther has an opinion about music in the church, right? I'm honored to travel with these saints of God and to be a part of this trip, this mission trip that they're going on. But I have to tell you, the issue is this, that I am not going to be fully engaged in how they are presenting the word of God to the people of God, right? I will be going along and I will be having fun and I will be doing some of the things that they're doing, but there's one, one big piece that I will not be a part of. And that's when they actually sing at Carnegie Hall. I'm just going to be an observer. I'm just going to sit out here in the audience and watch them. And I will tell you this, look at our choirs when they sing. Any choir, when they sing and praise God through music, watch their faces, watch their very being. When they've given a great word of God, you can see the joy on their faces. Now, I can have that joy by listening to them, right? So there is a piece of joy that I can enter into by hearing the peace that they offer. But I cannot join into the joy that they feel. I can't experience the joy they feel by sharing that gift of music with others, by honestly preaching the word of God through song. So for all intents and purposes, I'm just a bystander. I'm just one who sees and enjoys, but never enters into. That's sort of what happens as we enter into Holy Week. You see, we have a choice as we enter into Holy Week. Are we going to fully participate in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or are we just going to be observers who stand back and let the gospel unfold but we don't really want to enter into it. We don't really want to commit to it. Because you know what? If you commit to the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you have to realize that in this world, you have to give something up. You cannot be a true disciple of Jesus Christ and continue to follow the ways of the world. And that's why often we choose to not go fully into and participate in the word of God, in the gospel, but rather to just be observers, to give lip service to the gospel, to say, yeah, we like this gospel thing, and I go to church, but yeah, I'm not quite sure I want to give it all. How often do we see Holy Week, and it's simply just special days in the church year, and nothing more than that? When in reality, it is to us the story of everything that God did for us. God did a new thing when God sent his son, Jesus Christ. 
God did a new thing. The old thing wasn't working, right? The Israelites kept messing up. <laughs> and so God always, when they messed up, what did God do? God would always do a new thing. He would pull them out of the depths. I often wonder how, how many times is God going to do that for us? How many times is God going to pull us out of the depths? But God did a new thing in Jesus Christ, sent his only son to die a criminal's death on a cross. And it wasn't just a criminal's death. This was the worst of the criminals. The cross was only saved for the ones who were brutal. Jesus didn't sin at all. Jesus hadn't committed any crimes, and yet he was obedient to God. He lived out the gospel to the point of death on the cross. Jesus participated in the gospel completely and fully with his very life. We don't enter into the story because we fear what it is that we might have to give up. Timothy Keller, and uh, today we're wrapping up the book, The Prodigal God, that we've been looking at throughout the whole uh, season of Lent. And today I want to read this quote to you in his book, From the Prodigal God. As we have seen, believing the gospel is how a person first makes a connection to God. It gives us a new relationship with God and a new identity. We must not believe, however, that once believing it, the Christian is now finished with the gospel message. We can only change permanently as we take the gospel more deeply into our understanding and into our hearts. We must feed on the gospel, as it were, digesting it and making it part of ourselves. That is how we grow. I love that last part. We must feed on the gospel digesting it and making it a part of ourselves because that is how we grow. True growth in the gospel is not done by standing by and being an observer. True growth in the gospel is when the gospel permeates our whole body, when it sinks in so deeply that we can't do anything else but do for God what God has done for us. The gospel, and I often say about love God and love others, and that's the commandment we're given. But what's the gospel? What's the good news? The good news is that God loves us so much that God gave Jesus Christ and Jesus died on a cross and was raised again for us. There's no more to the gospel than that. When we respond to the gospel, we respond because we know how great God's love is. Because the gospel has reached down inside of, God has reached down inside of us and changed to something in there. That's when we respond by doing the will of God in this world. Again, Timothy Keller says this, faith in the gospel restructures our motivations, our self-understanding, our identity, and our view of the world. Behavioral compliance to rules without heart change will be superficial and fleeting. As we enter into this Holy Week, my prayer for us is that we ponder that. That as we wave palms today, we say and declare to God that no longer am I going to be just a bystander. No longer am I going to just be someone who's on the side of the road raising my palms to you, but I am going to fully engage and fully participate in the gospel. I want the gospel of Jesus Christ to sink deep inside of me so that I come to truly understand what Jesus did. I want the gospel. I want people to sense that gospel without me having to follow rules, but simply to live my life. Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for all people of the church, all those called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us servants of the gospel. Give us strength to confront the injustices of the world and to practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants, whom you created in love, Help us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for all creation that we may take better care of the world that you made. Merciful God. For those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from the fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed. Defend those who are wrongly accused and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill this day, those whom we name silently now. Merciful God, for all Christians around the world preparing to journey with Jesus throughout this coming Holy Week, Reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to new life. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We remember those who have died, those whom we've loved, those who we have commended into your hands. Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers that we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Take a moment, and as you feel comfortable, share that peace with a neighbor.
us with the harvest of the land, and you provide for our every need. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor, and transform them. Amen. Ever-living God, you have created the world out of nothingness. You are present in both the darkness and the light. You have created humanity from the dust of the earth and have given us the ability to choose between good and evil. You have called your prophets and champions from among the lowly. You have formed your people through wanderings in the desert and through exile in foreign lands. In your creative thirst to be known to us, you have entered into our struggles, coming among us in the human person of Jesus, the Christ. He was conceived amid scandal, born in want, raised in obscurity. With us, he embraces hunger and thirst, temptation, rejection, doubt, grief, suffering, and death. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Now in this sacred rite of thanksgiving and praise, we celebrate the saving work of Jesus. For in him, the cross, the instrument of torture and death, has been transformed into the sign of reconciliation and abundant life. Recalling his life, his teaching, his death and resurrection, we offer these gifts of bread and wine Spirit of compassion, breathe upon them now, making them for us the very body and blood of your incarnate love. Breathe your spirit into us so that we may serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and may swell forever in the joy of communion with you. Amen. To those communing at home today, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus is given and shed for you. And now we remember as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Today, as we always do, please know that this is God's table. It is a table of forgiveness, reconciliation, and new life, and you are invited to it. We will commune, as we always do, by intinction, that is by dipping the wafer into either section of the chalice. We have grape juice in the small section and wine in the big section. We also have a gluten-free option and individual communion kits. Uh, please let me know when you come forward, and as always, we are happy to accommodate. Again, this is God's table. Come and be filled.
blood of Christ was shed for you. Stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you today in his grace. Amen. Amen. reconciliation, mending broken hearts, working for justice, and striving for peace among all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 
We have only a few announcements. Again, if you're a visitor, a guest with us, we welcome you today as we enter into Holy Week. We also invite you to attend Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. this Thursday and 7 p.m. on Friday for the Good Friday worship. And we have a visitor uh, card in the bulletin. If you want to stay connected with us, we would love to stay connected with you. You can fill that out and put it in the offering plate on the table in the narthex uh, when you leave. And it is not too late to order Easter flowers to help decorate this beautiful space uh, for next Sunday. You can fill that insert out in today's bulletin as well. And uh, the orders will be due, though, by Friday, and you can talk to either Pastor Bonnie, myself, or Deb Ward, who will be out in the narthex. There's a flower table out there. We have a flower table, too, so you can kind of pick what you want to order. Now, receive the blessing. Let us go from this place of worship that God has given to us. Led by the Spirit, we will go to be with those who are filled with fears, with hopes. Let us go from the refuge of the table where we have tasted the first fruits of grace. Led by the Spirit, we will go to feed those who hunger for companionship and life. Let us go to the world living out God's reality that there is no distinction between people. Led by the Spirit, let us go to serve. Let us go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.